Following the big trade the Toronto Maple Leafs made yesterday to acquire Labushkin from the Anaheim Ducks, some more details have been revealed and the truth behind the trade is starting to become clear, so we'll break that down and much more in this episode of Leafs Digest. But before we do, quick reminder, hit the subscribe button. About 80% of you who are watching are not subscribed, so if you aren't already, make sure to hit that button. We are on the road to 7,000. Now, Darius, we've had some time to marinate this trade, and I think a lot of Leafs fans are actually kind of starting to open up to the idea of uh, what the trade was, what we've given up. Everything's kind of starting to become clear uh, now, and let's start with the, uh, I mean, the official trade here and you can see that we've acquired the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, Labushkin and the rights to unsigned draft choice Kirill Slepitz in a three-team trade with the Ducks and Carolina Hurricanes we did give up our third round pick and our sixth round pick and the Maple Leafs have now traded away their first second third and fourth round pick in the 2025 draft and Darius before we get into like the real reason behind this trade I just want to get your quick thoughts again on the trade uh, 24 or 12 hours after it's kind of happened here have your thoughts changed at all or do you like what the uh, the direction is of the of the trade I like the trade. I, I did like it last night because obviously I'm not, I try not to be too pessimistic when it comes to the Leafs. And I know that the, you know, the situation in the window they're in and they have to make moves, right? That's just the the simple fact of the matter. And now uh, Giordano goes down with the injury. So that's another reason behind it as well, which I'm sure we'll talk about, but um, yeah, just sleeping on it. I still like the move. I, I still think it's a good move. And I think a uh, majority of the fan base, if you asked me last night on Twitter, I would say it was 50 50, but I think majority of the fan base is warming up to it and thinking it is a good move. But I think most of the uh, excitement comes from the fact that they are going to make another one, or it looks like they're going to make another one. Yeah, and that's what we're going to get into, right? Uh, now, this was Elliot Friedman on the 32 Thoughts podcast. He said the Leafs were talking uh, to Toronto and Anaheim, but all of a sudden, the Lebushkin trade happened and intensified because of the uh, Giordano injury. And he also says, and Joseph Zita here says, with Timmins, Lilligren, Giordano out, and Lebushkin coming in at 687.5, another trade for a defenseman seems likely. And that's kind of the big thing about this trade that we discussed yesterday was obviously, I mean, you kind of pointed it out because it, it probably happened because of the Giordano injury. I mean, at least it intensified things. So we saw literally like two or three hours after that injury happened, they got the deal done. So the deal was already semi in place, but now, uh, I mean, it happened almost right after with all this money available, simply because of the re uh, retention of the other teams and the lack of retention for Toronto. Maybe now they can go out and the, the real reason they made this trade was obviously to get another right-handed shot defenseman to shore up the with all the injuries with Giordano, but also to uh, I mean allow us to get a bigger fish. We still kept our first-round pick, but I think that's ultimately where uh, what it comes down to here. Well, I think that's what it is. Just looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, the reaction on Twitter and just online in general, a lot of people are dumping on Labushkin and ah, this is a terrible trade, which is weird because a lot of the same people were saying the opposite thing about him when they acquired him the first time. Uh, but I think it's a great trade. But I think the reason I'm personally most excited for it is the logistics, uh, logistics of the trade make it seem like there are more coming. It's not the player in himself. And I'll get into the player in a second in Labushkin because I think he will be useful for this team. It's the fact that the structure of the deal allows the Leafs to make one, maybe two, you know, more moves, big moves on the on the back end there. Uh, and that wasn't the case just a few weeks ago, right? We, we couldn't say that a few weeks ago. So that's exciting in itself. That's why I'm excited for this because it looks like they are going to add exactly what they need, which is something, I mean, even last year, they needed a few things, but they, I feel like they over added looking back hindsight 2020, they, they made a lot of trades. And, uh, like you mentioned, they don't have a second or sorry, they don't make a pick next year. They don't have the second uh, second round picks for the next three years. Yep. They don't make a pick until the fifth round next year. So the cupboard is getting a little empty, but their window is right now. Their guys are in their prime. They have to win. So it's just exciting in that way. I don't want to talk about the draft picks. We'll deal with it when we deal with it. Obviously, you don't want to overspend too much, uh, but you have to look at your team right now. There's injuries. You have no right shot defenseman. You have to do stuff like that. So um, the potential for them to make more moves is exciting. I'm, I'm just, I, I'm excited for them to go into the playoffs. They're going to make another move here quickly because the trade deadline is Friday. Yeah, we uh, a week. So, like you said, I mean, okay. So they ended up paying a, a third and a six. We were debating about whether the six was going to be given up, and this was uh, from JD Bungie's here. Final trade thoughts on that, and he says if you're framing him as a top pairing D, then of course it's a disappointment. But the names on the trade boards the last month, he's got maybe the best fit to price ratio. You also don't pay for the double retention unless you've got other plans, and that's kind of the whole purpose of this video here. And that's what Elliot Freeman hinted at. That's what a bunch of reporters and rumors are hinting at is that they don't make this trade the way that they structured it, and they gave up an extra. Six to kind of help the the salary be retained there 
unless they have a plan to make a bigger move. And I'll get into that in a second. But again, even Chris Johnson's out here saying the Leafs are acquiring uh, Ilya Labushkin at a cap hit of 685.5 with double retention, less than the league minimum. That leaves plenty of room for further moves before the March 8th trade deadline. So at this point, it would almost be surprising if they don't make another pretty big move, especially considering I don't think you add a guy like him unless you have a bigger move coming because he cannot be the only move that you make. Obviously, this season, you can see his stats here, four points in 55 games. He was very very good defensively for the Sabres and even for the Leafs in 2021 he was known as a physical defenseman that's fallen a physical defensive minded defenseman that is but that's fallen off heavily probably a lot of it at least partially is due to the Anaheim Ducks being a horrible Teams defensive team on. yeah horrible yeah. team in general and we've seen that happen with a bunch of other players before and he could come to Toronto now and go back to what he was literally just last season with the Sabres where he was a, a solid at the very least defensive defenseman but a trade has to be coming and I don't think this many reporters are uh, are going to be surprised if that happens no, I think there's smoke where there's, uh, or sorry, there's fire where there's smoke, right? I think there is another move coming. And uh, something that spiked my interest to the first thing you said there, where it might be disappointing if he is the first pairing defenseman or something like that, if they don't make another move. I think another move is coming. I, I, I think with everything, the structure of this deal, everything that's coming up from insiders, they're still in the market. Another move is coming. However, for the time being, going into th tomorrow night's game, it looks like from practice, at least from Jonas Siegel, um, Sorry, Max. Yeah, Max Lejoie is paired with Morgan Riley. So I think that's just a, a placeholder. He's probably going to go back to the Marlies, and then Labushkin is going to take his spot at least for the time being. However, I would assume that they're going to make a trade for another top bearing guy, or we we don't know exactly what's going to happen yet, what that looks like. But from Justin Bourne, Labushkin the first time around, he was really good in his role with the Leafs with Morgan Riley. He led the team in denied zone entry percentage that entire playoffs, and not only just the playoffs, but the entire time he was on the Toronto Maple Leafs and he hits hard. He's a physical player. He can't move the puck. That's one thing we got to talk about. This guy cannot move the puck, but it's okay if you play with Morgan Riley, at least for the time being, because Morgan Riley can move the puck. So as long as you push it to Morgan Riley, you're all right, but teams might target that. So that's going to be interesting to watch too. He led Toronto in block shots as well. So this guy is a defensive guy. He's going to be physical. The teams are going into the playoffs against it, looking like either Florida or Boston, however that shakes up physical teams they're murderers so you have to play up to their standard as well to get into the second and third rounds if you want to go to the promised land you have to adjust for who you're going to play against right so um it's going to be it's going to be exciting i think yeah and we needed a guy like this regardless uh, at least a physical defenseman hopefully it ends up paying dividends but one quick thing before i wrap up is uh, i want to get your thoughts are you fine giving up the extra sixth round pick i, I agree with jd bunkies here saying that it's probably the best fit to price ratio especially given the fact that keith has familiarity with him and he's been with the team literally two seasons ago just quickly before we wrap up are you happy with the the final outcome which was a third and a sixth round pick or would you have rather or is the is the price still a little bit hurting like you said yesterday third round is a little steep but like if it was fourth fifth that'd be nice but if you want to look at the sixth round pick it's for the you have to think long term right it's not just this trade that sixth round pick going retains that salary with that re extra retained salary you can go out and get another guy now it's going to cost you another pick or maybe uh, we don't know what it's going to look like exactly i'm sure we'll have another video on a couple targets but um you know, this allows you that's given up that six round pick in addition allows you to have extra salary cap to go out and get another guy. So if you're thinking long term, it's like, ah, I would have, you know, would have liked to not give up that much in this trade, but it might open the door a little bit for another bigger move. So that's exciting. And that's the whole point of uh, what we're saying today. Another move is definitely coming. We'll have you covered for all of it. That will wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hopefully the Leafs make another move soon. We'll see you tomorrow.